Hello to the Chicos and the Chicas. Welcome back to the last Sholom game analysis video. Today's game is going to be, in my opinion, a very instructive one in the sense that oftentimes play, uh, players play games where after resigning and signing the score sheet, they go like, yeah, I made this blunder towards the tail end of the game, but other than that, I really don't understand what I have done wrong in this game. And I think that this is one of those examples, and I think that Sholom might have felt exactly that way. And so I think it's best if uh, we point out the mistakes that were made in this game so that uh, we can then move on from here and make sure that we... Um, avoid those in future games. The opening is the French. I have spoken about my tremendous dislike for uh, about the French being taught to beginners. I think that that is a uh, sin um, to say the least, but um, I'm not going to go there now uh, as I've already explained my stance on that. So we are entering the um, advanced French and so far so good knight h6 or good h3 um, I would have liked a comment from Sholom here indicating two things a I didn't expect it and two it looks like an absolute lemon because as soon as we say this we immediately have a different mentality as to what we would like to do because if we call a move uh, a potential mistake we are far more likely to look into how we can punish um, said mistake. Nonetheless, c takes d4 uh, was a great move. And after knight takes d4 comes the repeat of the previous exercise where we go like, hang on a sec, I totally expected c takes d4. And they took knight takes. So now they have played the two very odd moves back to back. Surely something is amiss. Oh, hang on. e5 is hanging for free. Thank you. Uh, not a single mention of this pawn hanging on e5, by the way. So um, I don't know what happened here. Um, the comment is that bishop c5 would be a good move here, which I agree with. But the fact that there is no mention of the main idea of undermining the center and then eliminating the middle pawn in the chain, thus making the e5 pawn completely unguarded, like that, the fact that we just don't make a single mention of this is quite concerning because... Um, yeah, that's like uh, the bread and butter of French, right? Especially these uh, French pawn structures. And uh, yeah, what I really don't understand. So here there seems to be a ginormous gap of understanding French, French structures as far as the black player is concerned. Because we would need to go back all the way here and say that the reason why c5 is played in the French advanced. Because we would like to trade these pawns like this. Which would mean that this pawn has been separated from the chain and therefore wow 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 okay and therefore is now vulnerable so when we have some absolutely crazy town move like knight takes d4 then we immediately go like hold on a tick that just did my job e5 pawn is weak as heck as opposed to okay let me fix their mistake and allow them to connect the pawns again like this is literally french 101 French, like, I don't know what your first French lesson is about, if not this. That the French pawn structure looks like this versus this, and we look to bite into it from both sides, trying to blow the chain up, preferably creating weaknesses along the way. So this is, um, yeah, shocker fest here, that A, we don't notice that E5 is hanging, and equally importantly, that we endeavor to fix their problem once, and then twice. And this is why the engine is not a good coach for you. Because as far as I am concerned. Um, this is a positional blunder. So double question mark. This is a positional blunder. Double question mark. This is a positional blunder. Double question mark. And this is a positional blunder. Double question mark. That's how I would treat this. If either of these players were my students. Because this betrays that they don't understand the very, very basics of the opening that they chose to play. Um, and to elaborate on that, by the way, so now we know why we need to take back with the pawn. And after queen takes, bishop c5 is screaming to be played. And once again, here comes my mantra about why is a French a big no-go 
to beginner players because bishop c5 is Morphe all the way. Develop your pieces, gain lead in development, play aggressively, attack already developed pieces, target weak pawns. It's all about bringing your pieces into the game, open fast for your attackers, diagonals, dynamic aggressive play. Beginners should learn about nothing but that as far as opening and middle game is concerned. French offers you neither of these in 90% of the cases. And here, as per shown, bishop c5, the queen moves away, uh, h4 is met by knight f5, castles, castles, and the super thematic f6, opening up the f file against the f2 pawn. It is by no means winning for black, but this is what good chess looks like in the French, but in general as well, instead of fixing our opponent's mistakes by reconnecting the pawns and essentially turning this position to be rather equalish. Knight f5, bishop e3, it was immediately taken. Seems like a no-brainer, right? No. Actually, no, it doesn't seem like a no-brainer at all. And i tell you why. Because if I, anything I'd play at all for black, and now I'm going to do a complete uh, lemon for black, White cannot avoid the trade on e3 because d4 is hanging. So if we run the assumption that this is not good because we get to take the two bishops, then instantly on top of that we realize that, hey, hey, no hurry, brother, because this can't go anywhere without hanging that. So you are far more likely to carry out your developing moves first. And when white is ready to move the bishop, that's when you take. The textbook case of do uh, of the um, excuse me of the threat being stronger than the execution because right now the execution relieves the pressure, whereas white, if I play anything else, can't do anything about this. They are likely uh, actually going to force this, and then you take and you have one a tempo, as simple as that. So actually, this is on the contrary; it's not no brainer at all. And by the way, it seems to me that this was a really good time to throw f16 again. There is a comment here that I find very odd, by the way. Engine likes the f6 line. Is it a human line? If so, will I ever learn when f6 is good in the French? And I'm very puzzled about it because I don't understand what's unattractive about f6 in this position. Like, isn't the idea to force white to take or us take and thus create a weakness? And since f4 is not possible due to the bishop hanging, the most likely line is take stakes, which has increased our central presence and allows us to play for e5 later on. And on a, an entirely different note, the position later fizzled into a very drawish one. This creates imbalance. Because now we have got uh, three pawn islands, so the pawn structure is a little bit broken, but we have an open g file and we have got a chance at playing e5 concurring the center in its entirety. I certainly would not describe this as a disadvantageous uh, change, in fact, on the contrary, but the most notable thing is imbalance. If you wanna play for a win, you want imbalance. But F6 is fundamentally sound and is perfectly the right time to play here, and it is by no means inhuman at all. It is a very human move, in fact. Uh, that looked to me like the epitome of a human move uh, there, actually. Anyway, so we took e3, bishop e7, um, rook f1, bishop h4 check. I have no idea why we are playing bishop h4 check here, forcing the king to a better square. Um, for the some reason, amateur low-rated players very often fall into this trap of um, denying the opponent's castling right when they have zero uh, intention to castle in the first place. And again, I find here the lack of logical reasoning quite telling because surely if we are, if our agenda is to give a check here to prevent castling, 100% guaranteed that our anticipated move for white was castles. And so when our opponent did not play castles but in fact played rook f1 first, or instead, I should rather say, then we, before playing bishop h4 check, should go like, hang on, surely they knew that I played here to give a check. Why are they allowing it? Like, to me, this, this kind of inquiry seems to be entirely absent here from Black's arsenal of thinking. And they surely then we would have gone like, oh, maybe they want to go king d2. And let's face it, the idea in an endgame is that the king stands well in the center, unless it can really be harassed. It can't. 
and it connects the rocks, so I'm doing their job. No, thank you. I will develop instead. Um, and worse still, after doing the check, now we castle, which just doubles down on the... Hello? And um, the comment is, Queens of the board, locked center, no need to castle. The effect might be detrimental. Completely on point. Why would you? Like, King E7, Bishop D7, happy days. Okay, so castles, Knight C3. And here comes a very interesting comment. Bishop D7 and Knight B5. I felt like I was forced to trade because Knight D6 is such a great outpost. But the engine really doesn't like this one. I need to better understand why. I'm going to help you better understand it very easily. D6 is a great outpost for the Knight. How? What does it give white? Um, attacks B7, I will give you that, easy fix. Attacks F7, irrelevant because it's safely guarded. And it's actually not a long-lasting outpost if I play F6. Which is what we should be playing here um, for a fair while. And all of a sudden, if this knight jumps into D6, after take, take, I will have very easy access to the E5 pawn. And the position just falls apart for white entirely. And this knight is Utterly misplaced here. Has no job whatsoever. I mean, it's going to hunt down b7, but that is going to come at a tremendous cost of my rook being activated. So, in fact, I don't think it will take on b7, which um, really turns this knight to be a miserably misplaced piece on d6. But for this, we needed proactive thinking. And instead of going like, oh, I need to butcher this, actually question how good that knight really is on, F on d6, especially in light of the fact that we should play and we should want to play for f6. Uh, yeah, take was a mistake. And uh, after this, I really doubt that we really had a good go at winning this game, but we certainly should not have lost it. a6, bishop back, rook c8 is fine, bishop here. I don't really understand bishop e7. I would have played here bishop g5 to attack the only weak pawn in the white camp. And this paralyzes the king. Um, white can never take take and trade because then the e3 pawn and the exchange drops. Yeah, I would be willing to play this on for black because why not? Um, bishop e7, a3, we play g6, it's fine. We played h5, it's totally fine. And this is where the tragedy happened, g5. I really do not understand the move here because if the idea was to put the bishop on this diagonal we could have done that five moves ago without hurting ourselves at all and now after take take it's crystal clear to see that this pawn is dead and this is where i'm again coming at you guys with where is the calculation here like let's let's just go g5 and we totally pretend that this hasn't been weakened on a light square by the way like all kinds of alarm bells should go off here that the spawn is is very very upset and um yeah we just completely abandoned it and unfortunately here now we are adding insult to injury by playing king g7 take take rook h5 and bishop h6 was an insta loss after bishop e7 i reckon this position is super difficult to play for a win still for white unless they have this spectacular tactic but even here i have rook f8 so i reckon that this is a bluff at the best of times yeah i don't think it does too much but bishop h6 again textbook case of what is my next my opponent's next move gonna be well surely this bishop is feeling a bit uh itchy and iffy and uh, tight um, and it's gonna get tickled indeed. G4, G5. Oops. And we lose a piece, we lose the game. And after F6, EF6, we resigned. A really tragic loss, but it really highlights the fact that Black has got ginormous gaps uh, in his knowledge of uh, his chosen opening, the French, especially in terms of pawn structure, and uh, in particular about uh, dynamic concrete calculation based refutations such as take take bishop c5 castles followed by f6 but also he just simply taking the pawn and so on so overall seems to me like a very painful loss but um 
it seems to me also that the reason why this whole game went sideways is once again these uh, ginormous gaps in our understanding of basic French structures are a great motivation to teach the French. Um, not that, once again, I have nothing against the French once you are international master or feeder master level, but as a beginner opening, I think it's just tremendous harm um, done to the player. Anyway, that was uh, Sholem's tournament. This is the last game, and um, I'm going to be now taking a very very tiny three days break when I won't release anything new but then when I'm back we are going to be back to regular routine guys so stay tuned because more super educational videos are to come thanks for watching uh, take care thank you very much for all those lovely people who sent me super thanks so please carry on with that as well as smashing the like button and subscribing to the channel. We are only 77,000 subscribers away from the Dreamerino. So keep at it, guys. I will be back with more soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.